Please welcome Susan Stewart. So just in case anyone is sitting in the audience right now thinking to themselves, so what's with the Ellen DeGeneres knockoff as our <laughs> final speaker of the day? Just in case anyone was thinking that or perhaps whispering it to the person beside them. I see you. Just in case there's any confusion about my identity, I think I'll start things off by reintroducing myself. My name is Susan Stewart. I live in Toronto, but I come in peace. <laughs> Namaste. I write and speak about seeing the lighter side of life, and I'm very passionate about this topic, because given all of the adversity that we face and how often things don't go according to plan, and the many challenging people that we have to deal with, it can be very easy to take things too seriously and get all up in our head and get stressed out. Yeah, I just think in light of all of life's challenges and complexities, it is so important for us to see the humor in things as much as possible and have a positive outlook. Because let's admit it, life is no fairy tale. If you lose your shoe at midnight, that just means you're drunk. I mean, I'm a comedian, so... I love the truth. Oh, I'm always seeking out what's true. What's true for all of us? What's true about this human experience? What's true about life? And what's true about life is that it can sometimes just be really tough. Yeah, I mean, life can break your heart. It can turn your world upside down. I mean, I don't know about you, but I've thought about running away way more as an adult than I did as a kid. I do think it would be cool to be a kid again, though, so, yeah. I could take really long naps and everyone would be just so proud of me. Right, like a toddler wakes up from a nap and there's some kind of like hero, like a superstar, like a saint, and everybody goes crazy, right? They're like, ah, ah, look who's up from a nap, yeah, who's a good girl, who's a big girl? Right? Like a middle-aged woman tells people she's had a nap and everyone's like, ah, isn't that nice for you? Isn't it lovely that you have so much extra time on your hands? Right? Everybody's all Judge Judy. Yeah, it'd be nice to be a kid again. But actually, you know, being an adult, being an adult is pretty easy, right? When you think about it, it is pretty easy, actually. You just feel tired all the time. And then you tell people how tired you are. And then people tell you how tired they are. Pretty simple, actually. Are you tired? Hey, guys, hey, you tired? Yeah, I'm tired. I'm tired. Sure, we're tired. I think a lot of us are tired because of stress. Right? I think stress is one of the main reasons we deal with a lot of fatigue. And I think, I think stress makes us tired for like two different reasons. The first reason is what I call the brain drain. Because it takes a lot of energy to sustain all that negative ranting and raving, all that negative chatter that can go on in our heads. You know what I mean when I say the negative chatter? Like, you have got to be kidding me. This is ridiculous. When will I ever get it together? Things never work out the way I want them to. I just know I'm gonna blow it. That was a huge disaster. I can't believe I just said that. I can't believe I just did that. I have absolutely no idea what I am doing and people are soon gonna start figuring it out. Oh, she's totally out to get me. God, I can't stand my hair. Right? Oh. That takes a lot of energy. But I also think, uh, I think stress uh, makes us tired because it can often rob us 
of our sleep. It can cause insomnia. Like when you're stressed out, do you ever look like this late at night and in bed? Right, because you're, you're, think, you're thinking about something that happened that day, right? You're replaying that thing over and over and over again, right? You're like, what did she mean when she said she liked my outfit? <laughs> or you're lying there and you're worrying about something that might happen tomorrow. Or you're lying there and you're obsessively going through your to-do list do you ever just go through it again and again and again? You're okay, and then 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 and then. Yep. Oh yeah. Definitely do and then and then. And God forbid there be that moment when you remember you have to do something really important the next day, and it's not on the list. It is not recorded anywhere. Have you ever had that harrowing moment? And you grab your phone, and you call yourself at work. <laughs> hi, it's me. I'm going to say hi. hi. Hi, it's me. Who the hell else is it? It's your voice. I guess you don't want to start barking orders at yourself. You get that from enough people during the day. OK, listen up. Listen up. If we don't do this today, we're screwed. OK, bye. Have a nice day, bye. Right, it's always high and high. When... Now I know, I know some of you are sitting there right now thinking, whoa boy, this, uh, this girl's got to update her material. It's pretty dated. Right? I, I'm sure a lot of you are sitting here right now, you know, thinking to yourself or whispering to yourself, oh, I'm not calling myself at work. I'm not calling myself at work. I'm emailing myself. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are emailing ourselves, which I guess is fine unless we start replying. Like, oh, hi, Susan. Thanks so much for the reminder. Kind regards, Susan. Send. Oh, crap, I forgot to copy myself. lot to do. We're busy, right? So busy. You're busy? Yeah, I'm pretty busy, huh? You guys are busy? Yeah, pretty busy. No wonder we're tired, we're so busy. Does anybody else here find it ironic that uh, we're busier now than when we had to churn our own butter? I mean, I get it, we're busy, but you, you, you got to admit, it's pretty wild. I mean, here we are in 2018. There's pretty much an app for everything. I can pay for my parking on my phone. I can order my groceries online. How, how are we busier than the pioneers? Do you remember the pioneers? Yeah, they were constantly doing things all day long just to survive. If they wanted anything, they first had to make it. Yeah, how are we busier than that? And there they were, like building their own homes, uh, growing their own food, sewing and knitting their own clothing. They even had to make their own candles. And not for the sexy reasons. Well, they weren't making candles to like set a mood or create an atmosphere. No, they were making candles so they wouldn't, you know, walk into a wall late at night so they could make their way to the bedroom. Yeah, I mean, those were busy people. Those were busy times, but the thing is, the thing is, those pioneers, they didn't have to deal with emails, right? They didn't have to like maintain their online presence. They didn't have to do status updates. When a pioneer was churning their butter, they weren't churning their butter with one hand and taking a selfie with the other. No, at least they could focus on one thing at a time. I don't know about you, but I'm getting jealous of the pioneers. Man, busy, but very simple times. We will stare at, at everybody's posts, right? 
Don't we love staring at everybody's photos on Instagram and Facebook? Oh yeah. But we don't want to we don't want to talk to them. We don't we don't want to talk to these people. Oh no 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 no, cuz we're busy. <laughs> Guys, I have this lovely iPhone and the thing that I hardly ever use it for is to call people. Like, when my phone starts ringing, I actually don't know what to do. It kind of stops me dead in my tracks. I'm kind of paralyzed. And the thing is, is I don't want to pick up. I don't want to pick up. Because I don't know what I'm getting myself into. And I don't have time to find out. You know what? I think it's amazing. That like, I don't know what it was, 30 years ago or so, you know, before there was call display. Do you remember, is anyone here old enough to remember <laughs> when there wasn't call display? That was back when your phone was that thing attached to the kitchen wall. Isn't that amazing? Amazing that we had no idea who was calling us. And somehow we were fine with that, right? It'd be ringing over there. We're like, oh, okay, well, really, really, like, hello, right? All ready for anything. Yeah, we didn't know who it was, what they wanted, or how long we were going to be talking to them. We're like, hello. Oh, such brave souls. <laughs> I'm not willing to take that risk. No way. I'm way too busy to have a conversation with you about how you've started meal prepping. <laughs> no time for that, right? I got a long to-do list. You are not a task in my iCal, <laughs> right? Yeah, so okay, I love texting people. Do I have any fellow texters here in the crowd? You texting? <laughs> Favorite mode of communication for me, guys. Oh, I love texting people. But you know what the worst is? Is when I text someone and they call me back. <laughs> Have you ever had that harrowing moment? You're like, was, was my text not a clear message? A clear indication that I don't want to talk. But you gotta, you gotta answer, right? Because they know you're holding your phone. <laughs> You just friggin' texted them. And you're like, hi, yeah, great. Oh, oh you're, oh, you're vegan now, too. Oh, you're gluten-free. Amazing. You better get prepping. Yeah, I love texting people. I do. It's my favorite way to just, you know, touch base, keep in touch. But there are those times when you do have to call someone, right? Like, it's not appropriate to be discussing a certain matter in an email or a text message. You know those moments. You know when you gotta call them. And I grab my phone, and I dial their number, and as it's ringing, I do the prayer. <laughs> Anybody else here doing the voicemail prayer? <laughs> please don't pick up, please don't pick up, please don't pick up. One more ring and I'm a free woman! Do you ever strategically call someone's landline when you're pretty sure they're going to be out somewhere? <laughs> but sometimes that plan messes up, right, and they answer, and you're like, oh, hi, I didn't think you'd be home. <laughs> oh, crap, devious plan revealed. Now, I know what you're thinking again. You're like, whoa, who's got a landline? Who the hell has a landline? Okay, raise your hands, show me. If you've gotten rid of your landline, you just got smartphones at home, let's see it. Loud and proud, sisters and brothers. Yeah, that's like two-thirds of the room, which is cool, which is cool. But the thing is, you can't hang up on people like you used to, huh? Like when someone really like, you know, ticks you off in a phone conversation, gone, gone are the days of smashing down the receiver, making it ring in their ear. Yeah, it's just not the same when you try to violently press end call. Like, right, no matter what you do, it just goes silent. And the person on the other end assumes that the cell signal dropped and they call you back. It's quite a paradox, hey? These, uh, these mini computers that we're walking around with, holding in our hands, 
right? Because they provide a ton of convenience, right? But the thing is, they're also a huge distraction. Huge obsession. Like, guys, do you ever wish your partner would look at you the way that they look at their phone? <laughs> right? It's like... I'm just saying, some days I get jealous. Well, you don't gotta laugh. No, I'm not, I'm not the boss of you. You don't gotta laugh. It's just that you can't. You always can. It's always an option. See, that's the freedom of choice that we were born with. We were born free. We're always free to choose how we're going to view something, think about something. Right? Something happens in our personal professional life. You can tell yourself anything. Yeah, we're always free to choose how we're going to interpret and respond to our circumstances. Oh, yeah. We're so free. Now, while we were born with this lovely freedom of choice, I think it's also important to acknowledge that there are many things in life that dare us to complain, dare us to take things way too seriously and get all up in our head and get stressed out and go down that rabbit hole. Oh, sure, there's lots of things. Like, um, for example, people. <laughs> Anybody else here get stressed out by the fact that you have to share the planet with other human beings? Yeah, that's, yeah, that can be tough some days. I'm, uh, I'm into anti-stalking. Yep, learning someone's daily routine in order to avoid them. <laughs> and relationships. Anybody here in a relationship? Right, aren't relationships like the toughest thing in life? They require so much communication so much compromise. I think the best time in a relationship is at the very beginning, before you've met <laughs> and you're single. I know that's when I thrive. That's when I'm at my best. And of course, something else that definitely requires a sense of humor is having children. Now, who here has kids? Anybody regret it? Yeah, close your eyes, raise your hands. Oh, come on! I've also discovered that what you say to kids and what they hear are two different things. Like, I'll say to them, okay, kids, hurry up, we gotta go, we're gonna be late. And what they must hear, hey, start looking for that toy you haven't played with in two years. No, take all the time you need. It's all about you. Or I'll say to them in the morning, I'll say to them in the morning, okay hey kids, turn off the TV, it's time to go to school. And what they must hear, hey, pump up the volume, get comfy on that couch, I'll take you to school tomorrow. <laughs> a snow day. Or when they're at each other, you know, when they're at each other, I'll say, you two, stop the fighting immediately. And what they must hear, you two. Why don't you go one more round so you can watch me lose my mind? <laughs> I've also discovered that kids get really thirsty when you put them to bed. <laughs> they haven't thought about or talked about water all day. But now that you're trying to get them to go to sleep, the most intense dehydration sets in. They're like, <sighs> oh, and they're not interested in drinking the crap out of the bathroom tap. No, they need you to go downstairs and get the filtered stuff from the kitchen. Yeah, they're all of a sudden, they're water connoisseurs. These are the same people that have no problem smelling or looking homeless, but now they have standards. I've also discovered that a kid will run around for hours playing a sport or playing with their friends, but just try to get them to walk somewhere. Oh, go ahead and try. I've also discovered that kids ask a lot of questions. Oh, it's constant. Like the other day, the eight-year-old boy asked me what normal is. 
I told him it was a setting on the dryer. <laughs> Boom, done. Next question. I am getting the hang of this. Oh, but the thing is, and this is actually something I was not prepared for, but kids really wreck the romance, hey? Come on, let's go there. Yeah, like, there's just nothing really sexy about having the kids around. No. No, like, it's really tough to, like, feel in the mood after, a, you know, a night of uh, math homework meltdowns and arguments over screen time. Yeah, I've come to the conclusion that having kids around is like always feeling fat or forgetting to shave my legs every day. I know, I know um, couples with kids uh, when they split up. I know they say that it isn't the kid's fault. <laughs> but, I mean, come on. Come on! Come on! Before those kids came along, that couple had way more fun, freedom, energy, money, sex. Oh, yeah! Now, I still think it's important to lie to the children and tell them it isn't their fault. But I think it's also equally important to understand where to lay blame. I don't know, right? They're just like, they take so much, hey? Eh? I call them the little takers. Oh, they take everything from you. As I see it, having children is like being in a relationship that's 95% struggle and 5% enjoyment. Now, if you had a friend who was in a relationship that made her angry and frustrated most of the time, oh, you'd sit her down, wouldn't you? You'd have that talk, you'd be like, girl, you gotta go. You gotta move on. You gotta pack your bags and go. You deserve better, right? I mean, really, honestly, all my friends with kids, they rarely want to get together and knock back a few bottles of wine to celebrate how great it is being a mother. No, they get mom drunk. <laughs> you guys know what I mean when I say mom drunk? Because you get mom drunk? Yeah, they manically pound back cocktails because they're so excited to be out of the house and away from their children. And the hysteria makes them hammered in like half an hour. And they're like, let's build a human pyramid! <laughs> At my age, I'm not interested in like getting out there again. No, please, I don't even like to like go out at night. <laughs> right, at my age, I don't even like to go out late. No, if you want to get me out early, yeah, you got to like get me out like five o'clock, feed me appetizers, just pray to God I last. Oh yeah, I mean that's the thing, that's the thing about me getting older is that I'd rather stay home than go out. Has that happened for you? Like when I was young, I was always out, right? Didn't matter the night of the week, right? I had FOMO, you know FOMO, fear of missing out. Oh yeah, the big time FOMO. Now that I'm older, uh, I love staying home. I got JOMO, <laughs> joy of missing out. You know they say, go big or go home, like going home's a bad thing. I'm like, hells yeah, I'm going home. And I'm gonna take a nap when I get there. <laughs> I don't know what's happened to me, it's weird. Like I, I, I love going to bed early. I love, I love not leaving the house. I love not going to the party. Basically, my childhood punishments have become my adult goals. I can't believe there was a time in my life that, that I pulled all-nighters. Guys, I have a problem pulling all-dayers. Like, I, honestly, I recently caught myself saying, oh, uh, it's 8.30. Do you really want to start a movie this late? <laughs> We're not going to make it! I'm actually thinking about starting my own reality show. Girls Gone Mild. And people will just watch me sit on my couch watching Netflix. Uh, you guys have had a good day? That's good, that's good, that's good. You're ready to have a cocktail probably, right? That's the thing though, that's the thing, is when I do go out, and I do sometimes still go out, the thing is, when I do go out, I know to avoid certain drinks, 
And I actually do. I actually do. It's like, oh, no tequila shot for me, thank you. <laughs> Who is that person expressing self-awareness and implementing boundaries? And if I roll a joint, it's in my ankle. What happened to me? What happened? Oh, yeah, you want to talk about body parts? I used to have a left knee and a right knee. Now I have a good knee and a bad knee. And while I got all you women here, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. Ever since turning 40, my cycle is all different. Oh, yeah, I mean, my PMS is, oh, it's intense now. It never used to be like this. Like, I'm highly emotional. Lots of tears and the rage, the rage. Now, thankfully, I conceal my PMS by remaining psychotic all the time. So nobody knows what's going on. And here's the thing, too, is I can feel myself ovulating. Is that? This has just happened in the last couple of years. I can feel when it's going on. I used to only know that I was ovulating by the date in the calendar, right where I was in my cycle. Now, now I know. Because I, I can feel, feel it. it. Like, like, I actually, actually have, have like, like bloating and, and cramping. cramping. It's like a sneak preview. <laughs> so I asked my doctor. I asked my doctor about this. I, I, you know, I was like, what's with the physical sensations of ovulation? And she said, oh, well, the reason you're feeling ovulation is because your body is squeezing out the last few eggs. <laughs> so guys, I guess I just had so many eggs when I was younger that they were just flying out. They're like, <laughs> like get me the hell out of here. I need air. Now, now, I guess it's like some kind of like archaeological dig. They're like ancient artifacts. It's excavation time! Okay, dudes, it's almost over. And like, I got one more thing. Stay with me! And my boobs. <laughs> almost over. It's almost over. But my boobs, they'll just start randomly aching on any given day, and I have absolutely no idea. It's like, what is it, girl? Is a storm coming? <laughs> Little Timmy fell down the well? When I laugh really hard, <laughs> yeah, you know you're getting older when you got tears running down your legs. <laughs> it's amazing to see. You know, so many women together, all in one room. Uh, it is, it is amazing. You see, like, so many women together in one room. I feel like I'm at a Jan Arden concert. <laughs> I would love to see women stop being so hard on themselves. When women meet up with their imperfections, like every, any other human being, I would just like to see women stop you know, beating themselves up or putting themselves down. I'd love to see more women just get in their own corner and talk to themselves like any friend would. I mean, really honestly, and I, and I, and I, I, I really just wanted to be honest about my, my perception of this, but really, um, it troubles me. So women, so many women, you know, quite honestly, you know, think they're pieces of shit. And then there's so many men who think they have it all together. And the irony is... <laughs> now stay with me, men. This is more of a comment on the women. And when I say that there's so many women who think they're pieces of shit, what I'm really trying to get at is that I just, I'm troubled by how so many women still carry around the guilt. The guilt because they're not perfect. They're not the perfect wife or the partner. They're not the perfect um, mother or perfect daughter or friend. 
And so many women, they still just don't think they're doing enough. You know, con we're constantly thinking that we're not doing enough uh, in our careers or, or in, our, you know, in, in our personal lives. And we can't take a compliment. We women still have so, so much trouble taking a compliment. When someone says something positive to you, own it. You know, have some of that swagger that so many men seem to have so easily. Right, rather than the self-deprecation act, what about owning? Owning your knowledge, your talent, maybe your beauty. Have a little bit of swagger, you know? Really, like when you, when, you, when you think about it, like you tell a woman, you know, that you like her hair, and she's like, ah, I hate this cut. It's all overdue to get my roots done. Think about shaving my head. It's like, you tell a man, you tell a man that you like his haircut, and he's like, thanks. My wife uh, sent me to uh, some new fancy salon. Cost me a goddamn fortune, but I think it was worth it. You want to touch it? Like, or you tell a woman that uh, you like her outfit, right? And she's like, oh, 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 oh. had it for a hundred years. I look like a potato. I think I'm gonna burn it. You tell a man. You tell a man. But you like his outfit? He's like, thanks. <laughs> Cost me a goddamn fortune. But when I saw myself in the mirror, I knew I had to have it. You want to touch it? <laughs> or you tell a woman, you tell a woman that she's looking good. And you ask her if she's lost weight. And she's like, I wish. I've been working out every day, eating nothing but ice cubes. I haven't lost a goddamn pound. I'm thinking about having the surgery. You tell a man that he's looking good and you ask him if he's lost weight. He's like, thanks for noticing. Switch to diet pop. Yeah, still eating the same crap as I always have. Haven't been working out, the pounds are just flying off. And then he laughs. Piece of shit. <laughs> we women, we don't want to take a compliment. We have a real hard time taking a compliment, but we work very hard to get one. The other day, I watched a YouTube video of a woman teaching the fine art of contouring. <laughs> yes, hello and welcome. Okay, so we're going to start off by applying a very light shade of foundation here, and here, and here, and here, and here. Okay, so now we're going to apply a dark shade of foundation. Here, and here, and here, and here, and here. Now we're going to apply a really light shade of foundation. Here, and here, and here, and here, and here. Now we're going to take this stick, and we're going to draw lines on our face. Here, and here, and here, and here, and here. And once girlfriend had her war paint on, she looked like she was going to break out into a tribal dance and go off out into battle. After two and a half hours and 28 layers of foundation, she looked the same. Right, like we women, we have a bit of a, a war perception of our bodies, of our beauty, like guys, do you ever wish you were as fat as when you first thought you were fat? <laughs> I'd give anything to be that fat again. I don't know, is anyone else here sporting an extra layer of themselves to brave the cold? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I've just had a big appetite this winter, so yeah, I've gained a little bit of weight. Um, I know I'm not fat, but I'm not skinny either. I'm kind of that awkward middle where I get a double chin when I'm texting. That's where I'm at. <laughs> but according, according to a recent study, a recent study has found that women who carry a little extra weight live longer than men who mention it. So just a little science research for you there. 
Yeah, my goal for 2018 was to lose 10 pounds. Only 15 more to go. Well, you know what? I blame the children. Oh, like everything else, it's the kid's fault. Sure. Well, now I find myself in close proximity to kid food. Like, in the house, we've got um, the cupboard. I don't know if you guys with young kids have that, you know, the cupboard of kid food. It's like, whoa! And there's granola bars, and there's crackers, sometimes there's chips, sometimes there's cookies. Ladies and gentlemen, I am not strong enough for that. Oh, no, 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 I am not strong enough. So it's been a real novelty. I'm seeing stuff that I haven't seen in years. Like, I've been carb loading without the marathon at the end. Like, all my friends have gone gluten-free, gluten, uh, gluten -free, right? They're all gluten-free. And I'm gluten-focused. <laughs> Concentrate on getting my weed in every day. And the thing is, I have reclaimed, I've rediscovered my love of craft dinner. Oh my god, I totally forgot how good it is. Oh my god, it's so good! And I've been to Italy. <laughs> so when we make a pot of craft dinner at home for the kids, I do that other prayer. I pray to God they don't want seconds. Do you ever try to convince children that they're full so you can get their leftovers? <laughs> like, oh, getting really full, hey, yeah, pretty stuff, can't eat another bite, eh? Or when I'm scraping out their bowl into the garbage, I pray to God everybody looks away in another direction all at once, and I'm like, oh! Of course you gain weight when you have children. You have two dinners, one at the kitchen table and one hovering over the trash can. <laughs> I find that nothing quite ends a meal like another meal of <laughs> chicken finger and tater tots. Yeah, so I've been, you know, trying to, you know, curve my, curve my uh, intake of uh, the carbohydrates in the cupboard. I find dieting like riding a bike, like a bike that's very hot and on fire, and the ground's on fire, and everything's on fire because I'm in hell. You know, they say that nothing tastes as good as skinny feels. Have you heard that? Nothing tastes as good as skinny feels, which I agree with, except for wine. Wine tastes like skinny can go screw itself. No, if you had the choice, if you guys had the choice between being skinny for the rest of your life or drinking wine, which would you choose? Red or white? Actually, last week I went to one of those wine and painting nights. Have you guys ever done that before, the wine and painting nights? Yeah. Yeah, at one point the instructor came up to me and she's like, wow, you're really good at wine. <laughs> yeah, I got tipsy, forgot to paint something. Whatever, no judgment. But also trying to exercise regularly, trying to, you know, slim down again. Yeah. Every morning, every morning I do five sit-ups. I know it, I know. It doesn't sound like much, but there's only so many times you can hit the snooze button. But that, that is pure core. Pure core. I have been trying to do other things too. Last week I uh, tried my first hot yoga class. Yeah, it was terribly disappointing. The teacher wasn't hot. And then the other day I tried my first spin class. Have you guys ever tried the stationary bike class? Oh, it's terrible. I call it try not to barf class. Everybody gave me these weird looks when I got off my bike and I started walking beside it. Well, we were going up a hill. <laughs> and then they laughed in my helmet. Skinny bitches. I do think exercise would be far more fulfilling if calories screamed when you burned them. <laughs> hey, I mean, I could get into a few squats then, right? <laughs> awesome feedback. Actually, yesterday I burned 2,000 calories. Yeah, fell asleep when I had brownies in the oven. <laughs> but I'll take it! I'm going to leave with you five pieces of advice to help you see the lighter side of life. My first piece of advice is every day, tell someone you love them. Because life is short. But yell at them in German. <laughs> ich liebe dich! Because life is also terrifying and confusing. So let's not sugarcoat things. Don't try to please everybody. No matter what you do, you can't please everybody. You're not pizza. 
It's important to view yourself in a positive light. The other day I was at the dentist and he suggested that I get a crown. I said, I know, right? <laughs> when life hands you lemons, you slice up those lemons. You put them in a big glass of vodka and tell everyone you're on a cleanse. And if your cup is half full, you need a better bra. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Thank you very much.